The Road to Single Party States, or How Governments Become Big, Filthy, Mean, Power-Hungry Machines That Ignore the Needs of Your Ordinary Citizen. We're going to start out very simply. What is a state? Some of you may say Wisconsin, others may say Texas, and you're right, these are states. But in IB Global, when we say state, we think bigger. A sovereign state or a free state is basically just a body of land or a group that is independent of others. A state has a leader, its own government, its own flag, national anthem, and many other things. Does Wisconsin have all of these things? Yes. But we are also part of a bigger state, the state of America. Mexico is also a state, so are Germany, Italy, Nigeria, China, Vietnam, and so on. Now, you might say, Mr. Wood, you're just naming a bunch of countries, to which I would reply, bingo! And no, the state of happiness doesn't count for the study of history. So what is a single party state? The term single party state is talking about a state that is run by only one political party. In America today, even though you only hear about Republicans and Democrats, we actually have a whole bunch of political parties that could have people elected to government positions. These political parties include the Republicans and Democrats, but they also include the Green Party, the American Socialist Party, the American Communist Party, the Libertarian Party, the Constitution Party, the Populist Party, and so on. Single party states are what some historians call crisis states. Usually it's a crisis of war, an economic crisis where lots of people are unhappy because they're poor, or religious conflict. These crises or conflicts lead to hopelessness and despair in the state. The people don't know what to do and they fear what could happen to their country. When people are afraid, they become attracted to extreme solutions or ideologies to try to fix things so that they can have some hope or optimism in their daily life. Why learn about single party states? People still try to create single party states today, and there are many of them around the world, so you need to see if you are ever being sucked into one. After the Cold War, Russia was a democracy that elected this guy, Putin, as president. After his term was up, his buddy in office after him changed the laws so that Putin could be elected again to another office but he also made that office more powerful. So Putin and his party have pretty much been in power for the last 20 years in Russia. When we talk about single party states, they don't just appear out of nowhere. There is a path that they all follow. First, there has to be a bad leader. Second, there has to be a national crisis, something that scares everybody. Third, that bad leader from before has to do a poor job of taking care of the crisis, leaving everybody still scared. Finally, fourth, that new leader comes to power. He'll usually take things to the extreme to fix the crisis. Fifth, somebody stands up to and opposes that new leader, but the sixth thing happens. The new leader destroys the people that are opposing him. The first step in a country becoming a single party state is that there first has to be a bad leader or weak government. This could be a leader that cannot get the people to follow him or her, or a government that is not supported by the citizens. In other words, this government does not have the power to make or enforce laws. Second, there has to be a national crisis. This would be something that nearly everybody in the country would be unhappy with. It could be something as harmful as a war, or it might be something not as physically dangerous, like unemployment, or people not having jobs, or inflation, where money becomes worthless and you can't buy anything. The third step in the road to single party states is that the bad leader or weak government is unable to fix the crisis. Sometimes they may not be able to stop the war, or they may not be able to give people jobs. Keep in mind that these are very broad examples. Fourth, a new leader from a political party rises to power on the promise of being able to fix the crisis and change the country for the better. This new leader might come to power in a number of different ways. They could be given power by the weak government because they are desperate. They might be elected by the people, or they might just grab power through a coup d'etat. See your definitions if you forgot what this one was. The fifth step in the rise of single party states is that somebody or a group decides that the new leader and his political party are dangerous. This opposition fears that they are going to lose power if the new leader and his or her party take over. So they try to stand up to the new leader. And finally, the sixth step is for the new leader and his or her political party is to crush the opposition. This is usually done through violence and unfair trials that lead to jail time, and in many cases, torture for anybody that stands up to the new leader and his or her political party. 
This could also be done through propaganda, education, and the media. So there you have it. That is how we get from nice, gridlocked, representative democracy to an authoritarian dictatorship run by a single political party. Now don't ever let it happen to you.